Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, Hum by Verizon, RockAuto.com, State Farm, and WeatherTech. You know, to Chrysler Chairman Lee Iacocca, those dreams seem like reruns. He recently remarked that their 1984 models had already been publicized so much that to him they almost seem like last year's cars. We've seen loads of spy photos and sneak peeks for the press, which did make their looks familiar. But no outsider really had a chance to get on a first name basis with the cars, until now. Foremost among the Pentastar's new additions are the G-Body Sporty Hatchbacks, the Chrysler Laser, and this Dodge Daytona. They're America's first front-wheel drive pony cars, and turbocharged power makes it a horse of a different color, as we're about to find out. The Dodge Daytona sports a slick, cleanly shaped body nestled on a relatively short 97-inch wheelbase. Styling resembles the Chevrolet Camaro in the front and a Porsche 924 in the rear. That should tell you what kind of car buyer the Daytona is meant for. Made in Chrysler's highly automated St. Louis assembly plant, body fit and paint finish seem the best of any of their products yet. No significant orange peel in the brown saddle black finish of our car, and all body gaps are narrow and uniform. The Daytona comes in three versions, a base non-turbo for a modest $8,467. Our turbo version that includes the stiffer suspension and 15-inch Eagle GT tires for $10,447 and this full tilt turbo z package that adds flashy trim front air dam and built-in rear spoiler all for eleven thousand five hundred twelve almost a bargain in today's high cost new car market the daytona's interior also means a new dawn for chrysler with a clean functional yet expensive look not typical of cars designed in highland park in the past motor week found this car's leather fabric too slippery for some drivers but the articulated sports seats, standard on all turbo versions, were very comfortable, with inflatable lumbar and thigh supports. The only real interior complaint was the long steering column. That made a good seat to wheel to pedal position hard to find. Once settled, the driver is faced with an analog instrument cluster that is well nigh perfect. Even the electronic dash found on the top of the line Chrysler Laser LE model is the most legible video arcade yet. Throughout the cabin, smart, thoughtful touches abound. The turbo boost gauge is large and simple. A real dead pedal provides rest for your left foot, while an oversized accelerator lets the right have fun. Small item storage includes a center dash nook that features a cup or a can holder and other items can be hidden from prying eyes in a net found under the seat. The two plus two nature of the car means that rear passengers will be limited to children and other small folk. At least their heads won't bake though, thanks to hatch mounted sun visors. That large third door covers an optional cargo cover and a long flat floor that easily handled our four standard bags, even with the split rear seats upright. All Daytona and Lasers use Chrysler's sturdy 2.2-liter overhead cam four-cylinder. The turbo version includes a modified Bosch multi-point fuel injection system. It's rated at a very healthy 142 horsepower and 160 pounds of torque. That compares with the base throttle body injected power plants, 99 horses and 119 pounds of torque. In order to extend the life of the expensive turbocharger, the center bearing is cooled by a unique water jacket. Plus, a functioning hood scoop directs outside air to the turbine's home on the backside of the transverse power plant. And Chrysler backs up all this engineering with the industry's first five-year, 50,000-mile warranty on a turbo. When it comes to handling, you can still tell the Daytona is a front-drive car, but only at its limits. This is the best handling front wheeler we've yet seen, with the possible exception of the Saab 900 Turbo. Transits are flat and fast with quick ratio, hard feel, power rack and pinion steering. The strut coil spring suspension uses gas-filled shocks to keep the ordinarily light rear end firmly planted on the pavement. An impressive setup that delivers great handling and a comfortable ride over all but the most obtrusive expansion joints. Acceleration is also outstanding, if not in the pure muscle car category. Quarter mile times averaged a quick 16.9 seconds at 80 miles per hour. 
And a 0 to 60 sprint was accomplished in 11 seconds flat. Plus, a get out of trouble with confidence 40 to 55 passing test was dispatched in a scant 4.3 seconds. All terrific results for any 2,800 pound four cylinder. Those times would have been faster if it hadn't been for the improved but still vague five speed shift linkage. But you can always opt for the three speed automatic. We'd also like to see more work on the Daytona's disc drum brakes. While hard stops of 123 feet, 55 miles per hour were very short, our car's rear would tend to twist one way and the front pull the other. Plus the pedal was spongy with little feel. The system is secure, it's just not as good as the rest of the car. Mileage also fell short of billing. The EPA rates the turbo five-speed Daytona Laser at 22 city and 38 highway. Our urban test loop yielded only 25, while a 3,000 mile cross-country excursion averaged 31. It's been 20 years since Lee Iacocca invented the pony car market with the original Ford Mustang. And now he's redefined it and modernized it with the Dodge Daytona and Chrysler Laser. Their prowess may not appeal to somebody who insists on rear drive V8 brute force, but it does make for an exciting evolution of the breed.